Hey guys, this week I'm being joined by Alyssa, a friend of mine, and she's also an inner city high school teacher in Miami. And DJ Townsell, you guys may know him as my trainer on Instagram, but he's also a competitor on the Titan Games on NBC right now. I wanted to have a conversation with them both about the viral videos that we keep seeing online of students and teachers fights in the classroom. As you all know, I have a teenage daughter and DJ has a daughter as well, but I wanted to hear the thoughts and feelings from a teacher because I know the emotions behind these tapes are different from a mother's point of view than a teacher that is living it herself. There's so many factors as to why I think that children act out. And most of the time, adults, we, as adults, we fail to recognize a cry of help from these kids. Not everyone is privileged enough to have both parents in one home, a comfortable bed to sleep in. And unfortunately, even in our world today, some kids just don't always have a hot meal to eat for dinner. We will dive into how Alyssa makes a difference every day in our kids' lives. Also, during my shit talk, (laughs) I decided to touch on the R. Kelly documentary. We all have known about Mr. Robert Kelly and his sixth obsession with little girls, but we are hearing about this documentary everywhere. Today, I wanted to focus on the adults that have covered up R. Kelly's sick behavior, and for so many years, the ones that have continued to do so. And for anyone putting blame on these girls with the excuse that so many girls have boyfriends in high school that are so much older, let me tell you something. That does not make it okay. If a child is looking for an older man for validation and love, there's something wrong. Our kids should feel safe with adults. We should know better. Men should help protect our girls. Any girl that has had a relationship with an older man is lacking something and looking for it in the wrong places. But instead of being guided to look within herself and be taught that she's good enough, that she has value, some people take advantage of the vulnerability and the innocence of a child. Also, I'm an 80s baby, and we were shown on TV shows and movies how cool it was to have an older boyfriend. The cool girl in school always had the college football player or the older drug dealer that would take her to prom or take her with him to the college party or to house parties. I know you guys remember that because I remember. I remember thinking, oh, the cool college guy, that you have to be cool to have them. You know what I'm saying? We were trained to think that it was okay and didn't realize the impact that we were having on our youth. We now know better, and when you know better, you do better. Don't let anyone hurt our youth. Don't cover up a sick individual's behavior for a little change like y'all did for R. Kelly. When you see something wrong, just speak up. So thank you all for listening to this shitty little podcast each and every week. Don't forget to rate and review this podcast on iTunes. If you haven't done so yet, just pause really quick. Take 30 seconds to do so. It's just, you know, a minute if you're a little slow. Share the episode with your friends. I know so many of, so many of you already do so. If you want to chime in on the conversation that we're having, you know, as always, you can email me at shit 30 podcast at gmail.com or shoot me a DM and we can talk about it. Now enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of Shit I'm 30 with me, your host, Carla Ramirez. And today in the studio, I have with me back DJ. What up, what up? And Alyssa. Hola. I'm going to introduce her as Zoe the Cook's best friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That is her. She is here all the way from Miami, and it's perfect because there was a topic that I wanted to talk about. And it's great to do it with her because she's um, a teacher. And then y'all know DJ, he's famous now. I'm not famous. He on I'm he, he on the television. <laughs> that, y'all I, know? that I am, but he, I'm not famous. He on TV. He with The Rock. <laughs> he half naked soon on on the Game of the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before still, he got and still not famous. <laughs> before he got too big and didn't want to train me no more, we had to bring him back. Anyways, <laughs> for sure, you should know. This week, I wanted to talk about. We've all been hearing about the Trump wall and what's going on with that. The government shut down. But I knew about a GoFundMe account that was set up to raise money for the mm-hmm. wall. Mm-hmm. So this GoFundMe account is now refunding all $20 million in the donations mm-hmm. because the plans of the GoFundMe changed. So basically, they're refunding all this money made by hundreds of thousands of people. You know, they're Trump supporters. You know, they're white. I would have been petty as shit as the GoFundMe CEO, and I would have used that money to fund the government shutdown. So well, people who are you can't. I'm just saying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the petty inside of me would have used that whatever millions of dollars they've already, you know, pulled together and start like compensating workers who are at the airports. Which it, it would be great if someone and, would have sent us put together a GoFundMe account just for, for that. that yeah. But no, so this guy set it up for the online effort to build President Trump's border wall with Mexico, and he's an Iraq veteran that did this. So somebody it, who somebody who Trump doesn't care about. 
at all. This is so hilarious to me. Not at all. Everybody who capes for Trump is somebody that Trump wouldn't give two shits about. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. Exactly. So this (laughs) Iraq veteran veteran went and made the GoFundMe page. And on Friday, he changed the plans of what he was going to do with the funds. So he updated it and said that rather than donating the money to ra- that was raised for the federal government, he would instead hand it over to a private nonprofit he said he established in order to construct a wall himself. So basically his own nonprofit. His name is Brian Colfidge, and he's a recipient of the Purple Heart Medal. His legs and right arm were amputated during, the second, during his second Iraq tour, and he has a history of creating and profiting from fake news and right-wing conspira- conspiracy theories. And in, in October, Facebook permanently deleted all his accounts. <laughs> One of his fake stories was that Obama is a pedophile. Mm. Oh. And it went viral with all the right wing That's... saying that he was a pedophile. And it's, just, it's not. So he's been profiting from this for a long time. He also created another GoFundMe account with the promise of helping and mentoring other vet- vets. Mm-hmm. And that he would go to military hospitals but the spokespe- and donating the money. Spokespersons for the medical center said that they have no record of him working at the facilities or even donating a dollar. Oh, wow. So he's been doing this for a long time. I think it was like, man, we talk about Nigerians being scammers. Hey, chill out, chill out, chill out. Listen, <laughs> chill out. listen. I just got my 23 me results. You better chill out. <laughs> you did, you did. You better chill out. There's a high Nigerian in there. <laughs> but no, they don't have anything on these um, Trump D-riders. You know Mm-mm. what I'm saying? Nigerians got nothing on this man. Right. He's out here scamming everybody. He's using gold so accounts. he's using this money to privately fund this wall himself well no so what happened now is that gofundme said sorry those were not the original terms mm-hmm. you can't change the term later. So you can change the amount of what you want but whatever your first promise was that mm-hmm. you were going to do with the money that's what you have to stick to so now they're refunding everyone and now he's making it so people have within the, these 90 days they can choose that they still want to leave the money for him to use he's going to keep most of the money what ball he has no legs and no arm excuse for him being a vet but where you going? I had, what I you had, finna build? I had a joke, but it was because he was a vet. And I was like, nah. No, I don't even care after he's trying to build the wall. I don't give a damn. So I was gonna say, is vet. he about to go out there and build it? It's gonna take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> With his one I'm sorry, arm. Y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's gonna take him a minute. A real long. He might need more than these twenty million to build that wall. <laughs> But I thought that was a cool article to read just because you see how money hungry people get just like the other GoFundMe account with the bum and the couple and they raised like $400,000. Mm-hmm. I did not hear this. You didn't hear about this no. one either? Well, I'll tell you guys real quick. You're talking to two people who don't watch TV. Don't. Right. I don't, I, I don't watch TV I, oh, on social media. But anyway, so what happened with this is it was a couple and they were like stranded. She was stranded and supposedly there was this bum that came and gave her his last $20 to put gas in her car. Mm-hmm. So it, the story went viral and they wanted to raise money to help him. So they raised like $400,000, a crazy amount. Uh-huh. Come to find out it was all fake. It, the entire story was fake. Video. They made it all up to make more money. But one of the two got money hungry and they didn't split the money enough. So one of them spoke. So now they're both in jail. Wow. Like they used all the money so they couldn't refund the GoFundMe. That's sad. <laughs> and it was just a mess. So GoFundMe, it could be a great thing to fund amazing mm-hmm. things for people. Mm-hmm. But you could also take advantage of it, just like anything else. Everything but, else, yeah. And, and like, guess, <laughs> guess what race the first three? Oh, sorry, Luna. Sorry, oh. doggy. Are we okay? Um, guess what race it was? Oh, they was crackers. <laughs> oh, they was white. <laughs> Just out here taking everybody's money like they are. Woo. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, so the topic that I wanted to bring forward, and I'm happy to have you here because I was thinking about getting a teacher, but here you are. Yeah, I am. It was <laughs> the topic of kids and these videos going viral of them being just disrespectful and physically abusive to teachers and i'm bringing this topic forward because i have ayana and whenever i see them and i'm watching a video i just think about ayana i'm like if she do i wish she would (laughs) if she ever disrespected an adult and i think it has to do with the way you're you raise your kids the way you talk to your kids and all those things but at the same time when they go to school there's times that you do things that out of peer pressure Mm -hmm. but it doesn't happen so and there was one specific per, like teacher that I read about, she was, she leaned over, her name is Michelle, she leaned over to a sixth grader, they call it a disruptive sixth grader in her class, to go talk to the kid, and the kid struck her in the face, I guess punched her, it caused her neck to snap backwards. It was so scary wow. and bad that it caused permanent nerve damage. Then she asked for the student to be removed, and the student got suspended, then brought back to the same class, 
She asked for the student to be removed. The, te- the principal did not and said, put your big girl panties on, was the response from the principal wow. to the teacher. Um, I would... Hasn't happened to me, but I won't say that I don't have teacher friends who haven't experienced that very same thing. So she went ahead and sued the child and got $197,000, but lost her job. Wow. And she's like, it's not worth it. It would just... The whole thing was just wrong. She didn't feel protected by the school at all. She wasn't. And she wasn't. She because didn't. although it is a kid, it was a, it's a dangerous kid. Yeah. Now, you snapped my neck, bro. Yeah. Like, I want to get out. So I said, I read that in 2015, 2016 school year, 5.8% of the nation's 3.8 million teachers were physically attacked by a student and almost 10% were threatened with injury, according to a federal education data. So I, I screamed to you while you were out there. I'm like, man, you got a dangerous job. <laughs> it's like, you out here with the cops and shit you know what I'm saying like, this is, you go to work every day say I love you to your family you don't know if you're gonna come back out but how do you but, deal as a teacher with this stuff um, like I said when you said that I was like I wish one of them would right but then I said to you and, and if they do what right that's so I actually I've I haven't had an experience yet where a student comes and tries to get at me I've had like battles with like verbally like verbal battles with students before Mm -hmm. but I've never um had like a close enough what grade do you teach I teach 10th and 11th grade wow so I'm in high school I'm with the big guy and you look like a high schooler yourself I definitely do my first year I got yelled at by security guards like once a month and I was like I'm a teacher so I was a sub when I was 18. So as soon as I had Ayana, I graduated and back then all you needed was a high school degree to Mm -hmm. be a substitute. So I would sub here if you're from Orlando. I only wanted to go to Jones, Evans, uh, I wanted to go to like all the inner city schools and I tried Mm -hmm. elementary school, lasted one day. I was like, these kids are awful. (laughs) Yeah. Then I tried middle school two days and I was like, these motherfuckers are awful. They have zero common sense. So they were a little bit older but they're just stupid. Mm. AKA like my child's in middle school. So I know. (laughs) Now I know better to not ever go in there. But high school, it's fun. Because they're they're in that stage where they can learn, right. but they also think they're grown. They think they're so grown. Like, oh my God, it literally cracks me up. So one thing about me, I'm really big on student relationships. So I get all the tea. I think I know more student tea than teacher tea. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know who's dating who. I know who's mad at who. All that stuff. Um, and how do you deal? What's What's the protocol? For when a student like does something or there is tension or security. So we have in my school and I think this is in most, if not all inner city schools in Miami, um, we have emergency buttons in our classroom that Mm -hmm. we can press that go directly to the main office as well as security guards um, on every single floor. So really? Yeah. That sounds like a prison. Right. Right. Yeah, they just, oddly enough, they just changed um, their uniforms, and now they really look, I don't like them at all. They're like gray, like look like they look correction like officer. Oh, yeah, wow. it's like, I, I was like, who So are you in this? inner city school? I am in inner, inner city school. Um, my school is about 56% um, Hispanic with the other African American. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So, and you say, okay, so now you call right away as soon as they, they lift their voice or they start screaming, you call security? No, so... <laughs> Funny enough with me, if I have a student, if I, if I'm reporting a student, that's how you know that there's an issue. I, I handle everything in house um, just because I believe in tough love. So I have very strong classroom management. So that's, but ideally, yeah, that would be what I would do. Like, so what's the worst thing you see? You said you've never had a, a kid try you or right. How bad have they ever tried you? Just like screaming maybe? Um, yeah, I've had the most with like they try to come at me screaming wise. Um, one girl, I tried to take her phone away and she like tried to snap it out of my hand. Um, that was probably the worst thing. Like I grabbed it and she like snapped it back and like I remember seeing black. It was like, <laughs> um, but my coach actually happened to be in that period right at that time. It was like perfect timing. So I literally walked out of my classroom and walked straight to my AP's office because it was my What's first an AP? year. My assistant principal, oh, okay. sorry. Um, went straight to her and I was like, you need to come right now because I saw black. <laughs> and so she took the student out, got it handled. Um, so I personally haven't had altercations. The closest thing in my classroom is two girls try to fight each other. Um, but what do you do? With, what do you do when that happens? Because I've also seen some of those videos. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. teacher gets involved, and then it's like the teacher gets their ass whooped too. So yeah, it's like one of those like flat or fight moments, and you just go with what your decision is. So I literally got in the like right as they're like close to each other, like screaming at each other. Where I'm like, something's about to go down. Oh, they hadn't punched in. each other yet. They hadn't. Ch- yeah, they hadn't started it yet, and so I just I 
put myself, my whole body, right in the middle. I put Jesus them on opposite like, sides. Oh, Did I just tell you that you have, like, a da- you have a dangerous job? That's I don't like know. like double dutch. You got to like right, go in right. and out, like wait so till you jump in. I like, I don't know. I, I put on my big girl panties, <laughs> as the principal said, and I was like, y'all need to chill the fuck out. And then I got another. You say fuck? Please. I, so I don't curse normally in my classroom that's like my one rule because i try to teach them like there's a time and place for everything like if you curse that's cool with me i curse too but like a time and place right do that outside of this classroom um i even had a girl one time my first year like she would tie her shirt like a crop top i'm like i like crop tops too but like time and place like i'm not rolling to work with that so i try not to curse but i do i'm not gonna say i'm a saint on that but yeah i Went in, jumped in in the middle, and then I told another student, go grab security. And so the security okay. immediately, sorry, the security immediately came, and then both of them were like, no, we're cool, miss, we're cool, miss. I'm like, nah, y'all not cool. I was like, y'all need to cool off. Y'all don't belong in my classroom. And I got... So them. do you have teacher... What do you guys call each other? Teacher mates? <laughs> Co-teachers? Oh. Colleagues? Colleagues. Co-teachers. <laughs> teacher mates. <laughs> Well, have you had one that has had an altercation with a student? So, oddly enough, in high school, I haven't heard from my high school teacher friends, but oddly enough, from elementary and middle school teachers. Elementary? What the hell them little names I do? have a <laughs> elementary school teacher. She's not a teacher Pick now. She's actually a coach for teachers, um, but she told me stories. One story, so there's two. One story, she had a kid throw a desk at her that's a strong kid in her direction yes (laughs) Um, i was like hold up what (laughs) and then she actually had a mom try and come and fight her like they had to oh that's good one that's a good one i beat her ass like the mom came and like was legit trying like because my thing here is they are minors so we can't just whoop a minor's ass right exactly well, they deserve not, it. not 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 sure if not, it's not if yours. It's your kid. <laughs> why not? <laughs> like if it's mine, she gets the whoop. This is why I don't teach at school. This is why I'm a right. yoga teacher. <laughs> when I think about it, I'm like, sometimes Ayana gets on my nerves. And if I was in the school, I would want to be a kid's mm. ass. Ayana gets to the point where it's so annoying, and I'm like, if it was somebody else's kid, there's no love there. Right. I'm gonna whoop your ass. You build no. There's love is easily created. We also come from the era of parents that if my kid's acting up, he yes. I want you to beat his ass. Because then I'm going to beat his ass when he gets home. Yeah. But then I think about it now as a mom. And Ayanna mm-hmm. goes to school. If one of them teaches put hands on my but daughter. if it gets to the point where, like, the examples you just gave. Yes. An example like this, whoop her ass. A, that means you already have no self, no control right. at None. home. But say, Ayanna, I don't see her attacking a teacher. But you'd be like, yo, I want that teacher. I hope that teacher whooped your ass. Right. And now I'm going to whoop your ass. Absolutely. But that's, what, that's the era we come from with those kind of parents where we right. don't have that anymore. That's that's very true. Like a lot of my behavior, if I have behavior problems, it's because they have their their, their parents haven't taught them that. Their parents act that way. What made you become a teacher? Because you're so cute, <laughs> like you look young, you're, you're you're into fitness. What? How long have you been a teacher for? Um, this is my fourth year now. Jesus, what made you want to be a teacher? Because it's such an important role. We need you guys. So oddly enough, it was really funny because I always said growing up, like you would never, I got teachers don't make nothing. You could never pay me enough to be a teacher. Um, I was a manager at a doctor's office here in Orlando and I was sick and tired of my job. Like I was over the nine to five, super boring. I was like, I'm done. And I kept trying to look for other things. And then I kept hearing about this program called Teach for America. So I sent in my application, did my interviews, accepted in my training in Houston. Um, so to so what's that program? So Teach for America is a organization, a nonprofit organization. Um, their belief or their mission, their goal is that one day all um, kids in America will be uh, will be able to have a um, equal education, basically because because of lack of resources, right? Our students in low-income areas and rural areas do not get the same resources right. as our affluent students. So the goal here is is taking young leaders and putting them in the classroom to provide those resources mm. to these students. How bad is the funding for inner city schools? You are, you're seeing it on the inside. <sighs> It's pretty bad. My school, for the most part, is okay, but there are I have teachers in other schools who like can't have to pay for their own copy paper. Huh? Yeah, like the white, like that. Exactly, one? Mm-hmm. and um, just to, to give the, to give the child to print uh, uh, out their work. And wow. for me, as a teacher, I have about 180 kids. Um, so imagine making copies for 180 kids, and I make multiple sh- worksheets for a day. What makes a school think it's okay for a teacher to pay for their own copy paper? They don't have enough money to supply the. the, They have no money. Yep, they have no funding. 
And you were talking about, you had a theory about the, it yeah. being worse within so, the inner city schools? Yes. So one of the things that I think about as well, and I've seen it, is one, where we are dealing with students who do come from, um, some of them, a lot of them come from broken homes. So they already do have that aggression and no right. one, it has helped them teach them how to process those emotions. So they're generally a lot angrier. Um, on top of that, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to lie, there are administrators there are teachers there are staff members that have this kind of ego like we're the kid where like yeah like they feel like you know i'm i can tell the kid whatever they want to do so like i've personally seen like a security guard like a student walks by who's in jeans not supposed to be in jeans gets away with it and then the next student gets in trouble for it and then you're like you wonder why kids don't respect you or why they clap right. back is because you're not fair. Yeah. You know, you're not enforcing the rules and then you you scream at them like they're little, like they're dogs. Like I feel like I have a theory on that. And just like cops, they were like nerds growing up. Picked they on. were bullied. They were picked on like you're saying. They were just like, just definitely possible. They weren't cool at all. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, I have authority now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show y'all. And what they're showing, they're seeing these kids as the person probably that bullied that them bullied back them, in the yeah. day. It <laughs> also, it also can be, there's a lot of things. So I, like I was saying with social emotional learning, I focus also on building teachers, social emotional learning. So I have, I, I, I am a teacher development assistant and I hold sessions um, twice a week. So you're where, teaching everybody. <laughs> yeah. You're teaching I, the kids I, and teaching the adults. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps, keeps my mind right. Keeps my mind right. <laughs> but one of the, we do different exercises. Like I did a, a session a couple months, yeah, like two months ago on no, naming and noticing our biases because that could also come from like our, we have biases that we don't even know. Everybody has right. a bias, whether you are aware of them or not. So we talked about what bias is and we did um, an exercise to figure out who we have a bias against. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one thing. Also, if we think about it, you know, if I'm used to adults yelling at me, if I was raised being yelled at and I listen, then when I become an adult, I'm going to assume that when I yell, that's my kids are going to listen. Yeah. So it, there's a lot of different reasons. I won't say yours is wrong either because that's definitely potential as well. So I definitely think that the aggression comes from like, kids generally feel like things are unfair like yeah, you're coming at them i was actually this is a quote that i said is something going into any conversation that i have is if someone's exploding on me especially if it's a student in my workplace or another like my boss or something i'm always looking out to figure out why are you communicating this way like what are you upset about so right i'm oh, you sound like my therapist girl. are you sure you're not a therapist my therapist never like, why are you angry Let, let's let's unpack this unpack real quick this. so i don't say that but in my mind i'm unpacking it i'm trying to like think about okay what so like for i'll give you an example when students walk in i always stand at my door and say good morning all the time if i peep a student who's like normally you know what's up great Cheering and the great the energy and then all of a sudden they're like just look off i'm like i pull them to the side like yo what's up what's good like i'm was i, I see sure something's going on right that gives me the ability to figure out where they're coming from also if they come in with an attitude right most teachers if a, if a student comes in with an attitude they're like uh-uh honey you better go take that outdoor but for me i'm like hold up Let's remember you're talking to a teacher. But right. number two, what's wrong? Because I didn't do anything to you. They usually just want someone to care. Right. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you ask, they'll tell you, oh, I got into an argument with my mom or, oh, my last period teacher this or, oh. And then all of a sudden it's like, OK. And you, you give them a quick advice. It's like, OK, it happened. But you're here now. We got work to do. I'm not going to bother you because I can see you're hot headed right now. I'm going to let you cool off. You still expect to do the work, though. And then like slowly. They respect you for They that. like mm -hmm. they, they're more engaged during that lesson that participating like you build that rapport with them mm -hmm. it's very very important so do you you said you didn't like your other job and you were over do you yeah. enjoy being a teacher yes so it is the most stressful overwhelming <laughs> super long hours uh job that i've ever had um but it is the most rewarding and i thoroughly like no day is ever the same. Thank you for being a teacher. Because yeah. I remember teachers growing up. Uh, one of them was Mr. Holloway. He was a math teacher in high school. I don't know where the hell he is now. But Mr. <laughs> Holloway was the shit. Like, he was nice. so dope. Now I remember Torpedo Titties. I can't remember her name. <laughs> she gave me an F on something. <laughs> we called her Torpedo Titties. I do not remember her name. Here from, it was Conway Middle School. Big lady, like Medea, kind of, mm -hmm. but a white, and her titties were real big and like coney. Mm -hmm. So we would call, I don't know That's why we called her torpedo hilarious. titties. She would get so mad. But I remember the good and I mm -hmm. remember the bad. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, 
the bad left like certain impressions on me but because of the good ones mm-hmm. I was like okay they're not the same way and right. you think about what you want to be someday and you guys don't get paid a lot of money <laughs> definitely not you would think if you guys you guys <laughs> are the ones that are creating the future of the world we create Literally. every profession mm-hmm. in the every world. single one why wouldn't you guys be getting the ones getting paid the most questions you guys should be getting paid with like superintendents of the police department are getting paid <laughs> Facts. I won't so, argue there. <laughs> <laughs> Start that kind of campaign. You'll sign it. Okay, I yeah, will sign that. You definitely will. So, like, and the way you talk and the things that you're involved in, I can mm-hmm. tell that you love what you're doing, you enjoy it, and it makes sense as to why you haven't experienced one of these. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. One of these moments. Sure. Probably. With, with kids. Because yeah. you can probably... If we were to go down to it, although some kids sometimes are just in a bad mood, it's probably because that teacher wasn't receptive to what they were going through. Mm-hmm. And then if you disrespect yep. the disrespect is disrespect. Yeah. Right. So even when I was younger, you Oh, I don't them. have I don't have a problem um addressing the disrespect. They know, like I said, I'm as a compassionate as I am, the opposite side, I like to keep a balance. Um <laughs> on the opposite side of that, my biggest word is accountability. So I will let you know. Like and I tell my kids all the time, I love you to death, but I will fail you if you do not remember. Like I'm not giving you Did you, you hear a about grade. that teacher that got fired because she wasn't allowed to give zeros? I did hear about that. And I was like, I yes. wish so the school an administrator wanted would. So even if they didn't turn it in or didn't do any part of their test, they ha- she had to give them a 50%. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm not going to give someone 50% when they didn't did do anything. anything. Right. And then she's like, that's not how you teach somebody. It was here in Florida, too. Yeah, it was. You don't teach. Of course it was. Uh, <laughs> every time in Florida, Florida. Every time. But yeah, so she um, she quit. Or they fired her and then she wrote it and it, and it went viral. She's like, I'm not going to give a 50% for a zero. No, not at so all. Does your, your school, does your school doesn't require you to give them 50%. My school has never questioned me. Um, the biggest thing, and this is just countywide, it might even be statewide. Um, we cannot fail ESOL students level one and twos, unless you've gone through X amount of circum like things to do that. So if you've covered your bases where like you've spoke with the ESOL coordinator, you've contacted parents, you've set up tutoring, like you, you have to go through all these like loopholes and jumps, um, to actually, actually fail ESOL students, which I have, because if you don't do my, and because the sad part is the ESOL kids know that, like they Uh, know that. And so they get like, and that's not all of them. That's not all of them, but I do have those ESOL students that know that. And then they think they could just chill. I was an ESOL. I was only there for a year. But yeah, if I knew, I was. I was <laughs> say, long I think, failed the test on purpose once. No, I, I had a friend it's crazy. that couldn't pass her test, and I don't want to leave her behind. Oh my we were, gosh. In, you know, Esau, you were the realist. <laughs> I was. Try, I you was, was holding it down. You was holding it down. She got a couple kids now, so <laughs> she, she was the one I knew I was pregnant in middle school. Oh. Um, but she well, couldn't pass. I'm like, I don't. And back then, Esau was a separate classroom. So if they, mm-hmm. we weren't integrated with everyone else. So I'm like, I can't leave her behind. I got to be with my friend. My dad whooped my ass. He said, if you don't pass that goddamn test, right. whooped my ass. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. I'll put the right answer. <laughs> but I didn't know that if you're in... I should, yeah, I would have been. So that's a school. that's a thing, but I have done it. Um, just because again, accountability. Like you're not gonna sit here and just not try in, in my class and do the and do the work because I have like I have Esau kids who when I say put in the work, like they are scoring amazing scores despite the language barrier. Like they are doing the work, they're getting the grades. They're they're just. What you got, Haitians? I have, um, no, I have Spanish. My oh. school is predominantly Spanish. Um, a lot of Central Americans, so Honduran, Nicaragua. Oh, okay. um, that's like our biggest influx. Damn, in high school, it's got to be hard to come in with a different language in it, high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's real hard. It's- well, anyway, thank you for being a teacher. Yes. I don't want to be a teacher, but thank you for being a teacher. <laughs> 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 I would not be a very good teacher. I would just be like, okay, we don't have to do that today. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Let's go on to the next. But you're like a teacher, DJ. Mm-hmm. Yes, you, you are. are. You're an instructor. A teacher yeah. is an instructor. Mm-hmm. So it's not. Ch- well, you did a child too, mine, and she bad as hell, and she complains about everything. She's lazy, <laughs> <laughs> and you did. Per- you did well with her. Yeah, I mean, she not. She's not a bad kid, and she has you to answer to. So <laughs> all I do is say, "Hey, don't let me tell your mama that you're doing this," and she straightens up. So again. <laughs> Being a teacher is good to have the parents to back you up. Yes, where facts. They're not like, oh, True. my mom ain't gonna do shit. So then they act out even more. Yep. Well, yep. I have you to say like, hey, yep. chill the fuck out. You I remember I'd be at work and yeah. I get a video and I call her. Why are you doing the phone? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay, okay. 
But I wanted to ask you, Mr. Famous Guy. Oh Shut my up. God. Before you leave, can I get your autograph? Shut up. Oh, <laughs> I'm so tired. Of you. <laughs> you know what's funny? I went to go eat at Kiki's and this uh, one of the waiters just walked up to me. He's like, Are you the guy from the Titan Games? I was like, Dude, I'm not even on the show yet. Like, <laughs> How did he even know? I don't know. Are you on the promos? Yeah. No, but the promo I saw, if I blinked, I missed you. <laughs> that too. That's all. I'm still wondering how people recognize me. Probably from their Instagram. Or like Instagram. Stuff like that. It's happened with that. And uh, ordered pizza one day, and the delivery guy was like, dude, you're on the Titan Games. I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got to move because this getting... motherfucker knows where I live. Wait, <laughs> no one recognizes you from Instagram here locally? Um, Some do, yeah, but. You don't do local stuff. I also though. don't do shit. Like, I'm oh, yeah, in my house. Can... You're tr- you're I'm right, at the right. gym in my house. I want to know how it even, it even happened. Because I talked with Zoe on how she got on Food Network. On Food Network. Mm-hmm. So how the hell did you get... Because we see all these shows and we're like, I want to do that too, but I don't want to do yours. So they did... Not only did they do like casting, they actually had producers go out and recruit people. So I had somebody who was following me who was a, happened to be a producer and he contacted me and was like, hey, you know, The Rock's coming out with this show and, you know, the, everything that you embody, I feel like you'll be perfect for this show. I... You know, I really want you to submit a video. I was like, eh. And I've been asked to do other shows like Big Brother and shit like that stuff. Why do you like, want to do it? What? Big Brother? I don't even know what that is. Like, Me neither. I was about to ask you said something. <laughs> <When I think, laughs> well, I was like, why not? We're oh, all so like, um, it? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm already like, I have a sour taste for like, um, for reality shows. Like anything where I feel like it's going to be people living in the house and you're going to be around oh, people. Oh, is that 20- what it is? No, it wasn't that. But oh. that's why I, I was a little reluctant to, to apply for it. So then okay. I'm like, oh, okay. So I looked at it. I mean, The Rock, I feel like he's not going to put his name on something where there's a bunch of people That's fighting bullshit. in the house. So I'm like, okay, this is about our actual journeys and about mind, body, spirit, everything like that. So I put in, send in a video application. Pretty what much. What did the video say? No, it was what just all it was just all my like yoga and old yoga videos I've put out on like Instagram a, before. Like a compilation but, thing? But yeah, okay. just a little montage of everything. So yeah, they contacted me. It was like, okay, we want to do a couple of phone interviews. I had to do the Skype interview shit. Like, oh, make sure that you, we can see your head and your chest. And oh, you're like, sure I'll they, show you make more. Make sure there's <laughs> make sure there's space over the top of your head. All that bullshit. So I'm like, okay. So I did that. And then what um, they ask you? Um, just you know about my journey and why I would be a good uh, fit for the Titan Games and what does okay. such and such mean to you? And I can't even remember. It was this was back in like April last year, April or something like that. So, yeah, then they contacted me back and said, hey, you know, you made it to the Combine. So we had to go to a Combine in July. Actually, my birthday weekend, I flew out to L.A. to pretty much work out okay. to be on this show. And then contacted me again. Hey, you're going to be on the show. We filmed in September. So I was in L.A. for about almost a month. This is when I got fat again, guys. <laughs> so I, I will forever say I was looking mighty good beginning of September. And then he left for the Titan game. And just it was right before the holidays. It I just feel like I gave track. you so many tools to continue to succeed I while need, I was gone. I need your physical so, presence from like a teacher. Um, yeah. <laughs> I gave what you tools, tools you gave me? and resources. I can't. So many comprehensive workouts. She needs you, though. <laughs> so you're really expecting me to not cheat on my own? I try to cheat so, when you're there. So, Alyssa, when you are away from school, you have a sub. Did you, do you expect your kids to still do the work? Oh, 100%. Oh, okay. You're I'm, catching I'm, these okay. nests if you so, don't. Wait, so now let's do a new, a new survey. So when you're gone and they're subbed there, do they actually do their work? Oh, they know they to do their work because they're catching these Fs. Oh, I didn't do my work with subs. So, I, I give out zero. You, got, you sub, got a zero for the month you. of September. <laughs> no, I got a. I got more like a twenty-one. Gained about twenty-one pounds. <laughs> so yeah, so was over in LA filming for like a month, and then you know after that it's just a waiting game. So you can't announce anything. You can't tell people. I mean, of course, family and friends right. know you what you. I knew. For. I, I knew y'all. Shut up. <laughs> so like you can't announce. You can't tell how you did or how the show went or you know all this stuff. So now. That the show's actually released, we can start to like do more stuff, take like saying that you've been on it, it, promote it, and do interviews and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just a now I see the 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 other side to all this production and stuff that goes on in Hollywood and right because when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that's, that's not how yeah. I remember it. Everybody's looking at this like, oh, you know, this is amazing. But then I'm sitting there looking at it like uh, like Siskel and Ebert. I'm like, uh, they cut out that part. Like that was a good part that they cut out. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, you're you were saying you're like you you're not watching while they're yeah, while they're playing. You're like, in for the, the most part, we couldn't see anything. So the the mm-hmm. good thing about this is that. A lot of these competitions and these battles between between two people, we're seeing for the first time as well. So they, at a certain point, because they we couldn't see the competition, because then we can get some kind of advantage to how we can beat the person ahead of us. They wouldn't allow us to watch it. 
So well, we it can, makes sense because that one where they're pulling the thing, like you can get yeah. ideas on how to do it better. And also, we had certain days that we go film, so I didn't see a lot of these people while they were like, I didn't even know what they had to do to get to mm. whatever round. Were, you allowed to, were they allowed to tell everybody else, or was it under contract? When when you finished your thing, uh, you couldn't talk about that. it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, were you supposed to not tell? Uh, I gotta overlook the contract to make sure. That- <laughs> I mean, you you build a relationship with people on the show, so you might get a little tip here and there, but... You know. It's still not the same when you're looking at it, probably. Yeah, no, no, it. it's definitely like the same. Like, when you get to that, what's it called? Mount... Mount Olympus. Like, that's just freaking Yo, ridiculous. I'm looking at it. That Look, I saw the girl, they're like, like, they're pushing the thousand pound wall, and I'm like, how do you push a thousand pound wall? Yeah, it's... No yeah. matter how much... You can do all of the planning in your head and, okay, this is how I'm going to do this and this is how I'm going to do this. But once the... Like, you got people in the stands yelling at you. You got fucking The Rock standing behind Looking you. Looking at like, you. You know he's behind you, eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> and, and then the camera. And the cameras are everywhere. Like, 17 cameras in the arena. Oh my it's gosh. It's in the middle of the night in... Talk about pressure. In LA. So it's not warm. So you're sitting there, like, shivering. And you know, there's all this adrenaline going. So it's a bunch of different things going on. Dif- different... Um, Things going on in your head, throughout your body, and then fucking cannon goes off. Everything you could have possibly planned goes out the window. You forget. Like, you like know, stage fright kind now of. Now it's just like you just take off running. So it's just like, okay, whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to react to everything. Did you, did you get hurt at all? No. Nah. Not like, were you sore? Um, Not really. Oh, <laughs> so humble. Not really. Yeah, I am such a I mean, that was like, like, like good shape. If anything, you're exhausted <laughs> can... because it's more, It's not even the the physical part was, you know, a beast in and of itself, but it was the fact that you're filming overnight. Yeah. So that's the shit. He's like, fuck, I just can't wait to get to my bed. Like, but what are you doing all day? I'm sleeping. Because so, you're, you're filming from like 5 p.m. to like 4 in the morning. But you don't even, you're not even out there all those hours. So you're you're just, still out there. It doesn't matter. You can nap? You can, but I mean, so it, going it's on. not a hotel bed. It's like, I'm not <laughs> yeah. in somebody's bed laying down. He's like, you're on the, either on the floor or on the couch. And then you don't want to get too comfortable because you know, like, we know who's going, like, who's competing next. So right. you don't want to get too comfortable. And then, like, you got 30 minutes to warm yourself up and get hyped up and shit. Mm. So it's like, until you actually compete, you don't want to get too relaxed. So mm. we're sitting there listening to music. We're eating snacks and shit. Eating like, snacks. Every few minutes, I'm like, I got to go pee. I got to get my legs moving or something. Damn. But you just sitting there eating. Like, not eating, eating, but, like, little snacks yeah. here and there. Drinking water. Trying to stay hydrated. Trying to stay hyped up. But well, you seem. I remember watching to... your stories, and you would go out, and you were doing like. Was that after the recordings were done? What? Or there was no more recording when you were like out exploring LA. No, that was that would be like the days I didn't have to shoot. Okay. So like I might have competed the night before, so I'll go like on a hike or something like that. Actually, the first hike I went on in LA was the day that I was supposed to compete, and then when like I went on like a three mile hike, like. Up a fucking mountain, down. I know the you mountain. can't tell me shit, but I find out if I find out your ass gets eliminated, and it was a day you went on that goddamn hike. I'm a right. real mad, right? Because you can tell me after that. I'm like, was this the day you went on that damn hike when you don't lose or something? So your ass better not lose anytime but no, soon. So- that's the thing I'm just trying to keep my mind occupied with other things so I'm not trying to sit there and think about a competition that I have later on in the evening right. possibly early the next morning so I'm like okay what can I do to clear my mind with me it's nature yoga or water so I'm either going to the beach I'm oh, going they're talking about drinking water so what the fuck water going no, no, no. Like being around water that's what okay. brings me peace so I'm either going to the beach I'm going on a hike or I'm just going to do yoga in my hotel room so how'd you prepare for this because I we I'm always working out with you, but I'm the one working out while you're drinking Dunkin' Donuts. It's not Dunkin' Donuts. And yes, you do. Starbucks. Do, no, you do Dunkin' Donuts too. Well, that's because Starbucks costs too much. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, eating fried something or bagels. Leading, leading up to Titan Games, I was actually training. So what did you do to train for this? Because now I'm I looking do, at how the do stuff you that train I have for this? So that's what I tell all my clients. Everything that I have y'all do, I do it too. I know exactly how, that's why when y'all complain I don't give a shit because I know exactly how it feels <laughs> clearly you don't like everything y'all do I'm like dude I did this two days ago or I, I did this in Sir, football so I'm your fat friend I, you can't make the fat <laughs> friend do the same thing that the skinny one does like you well no I modify like, I-, I modify all my exercises to meet the level of my clients right, but right. I'm also gonna push you but yeah it's 
I did what y'all do. I just probably added more to it or added a different component. Oh, I remember to it. when you were going on the the rings mm-hmm. with the weight on you, looking like a whole monkey, yeah. like see, monkey see monkey do. That was leading up to me actually going out to film. I was doing stuff like that. Oh, okay, so, so like, that just, was your training. So not even just doing weightlifting because I'm I hate weightlifting now. Like after football, it's like I did that for a job, so I don't want to weightlift anymore. So I'm always trying to find new ways to push my body so if i gotta strap a 45 pound plate to my waist and swing on some rings just adding something different to it looked crazy and i, I mean it and sounds i was looking at it and i'm like what the hell and i also knew that these comp this competition wasn't gonna be like oh we're just lifting 135 pounds as many times as we possibly can so why would i do that as a workout right. mm. let me try some shit yeah. that let me do some crazy america i was thinking the whole time i was thinking american ninja warrior and that's kind of what it is. It's yeah. the same, same producers. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I'm thinking American Ninja Warrior versus American Gladiator. That's the two things I'm thinking. So let me try some calisthenics. Let me try some body weight stuff. But Did also, you do stuff with... Whole, you know how... Um, I didn't do that. Like grip strength and yeah. stuff like that? I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. <laughs> Damn. But now, if, you, if you lose because of grip <laughs> strength, and I just came up with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought about this. Like, Yo, I should have thought about this, too. <laughs> so, yeah, I would do calisthenics workouts. I would do yoga, of course. I would do body weight training, functional training, but also I would go back to my football days and do speed and agility and stuff like that, okay. explosive training. So I didn't want to walk out there and be like an American Ninja Warrior when I'm about to like lift some shit or I had to push some wall or some shit what well, like gets that. you to finish that like everybody did the mount olympus don't no, they not everybody. oh not everybody okay no. never mind. so to finish something like that mm-hmm. or whichever one because all of them take something out of you like it, is it more of a mental thing is it more of a physical thing because when i do the tries i feel like i finished that those two triathlons mm-hmm. and it was mostly mind over matters like i i am done mm-hmm. my body should not be pushed to this point but mentally like i'm not stopping so it's yeah. all mental it's, and it's i see people quitting because of mental as well like mm-hmm. in the water like screaming for help and i'm like you're fine it's but you're like freaking yourself of, out it's all of that but then like it's mind over matter but you also have to remember that you have to put sometimes the matter over the mind because you have somebody going against you so this is not something where we're like like of course triathlon you're going against people but it's but I'm also going against myself but that's really the thing. yeah you're going against yourself in this I particular co- uh, competition there's somebody literally on the other side of the arena trying to beat you you're right you're so right. you want to say mind over matter but then you're like no nah, i gotta go as fast well as I mine was can. a competition i really wanted to beat my sister yeah but I mean, a lot of people do. A lot of people. <laughs> nice. I mean, unless you're um, a competitive. Um, no, but it makes it's a completely runner, different thing. You're on TV. People like you're mostly being... run marathons because it's a personal goal that they have. Yes. So it's not like I'm going out there to beat 200 people. It's like no, this is something I want to do for me. Mm. I did that as well. But when you're going to get, when you see, look over there, and this dude is like getting ramped Huge. up. Huge. Some of those guys. Oh my look, god. What the hell? They, you're tiny mm-hmm. compared to these guys. Yeah. I, don't don't tell you. I know you said you're thick. Mind. You're big and, and thick. I'm you're thick a bad bitch. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thick. I know you're thick, friend. <laughs> but them motherfuckers was thick. But the thing I love about this show is that the size didn't really matter. In some cases it did, but a lot of times it was speed, it was agility. Again, mind over matter. So you're doing things where you're going to be putting in work like y'all did my version of Mount Olympus today. And that, that workout was, was that workout was four was, minutes long on average. That that we're not going to say, we're not gonna say, we're not gonna say how long it took you How to long did the it round. take me? Ten minutes? It took you six minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, I'll still qualify. Like, I'm with that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's supposed to take four minutes? How long you did well, it in your second what, time? I just go off 352. Of she did Fuck 352. <laughs> <laughs> so like I was saying earlier, we were doing this whole Mount Olympus training in the gym today. And here she comes as a guest to the gym, you know. And he puts us up against her. She already does fitness stuff. And he puts everything together and we're going. Me and Dex are like, ooh. And then I look up. And you're two steps but in front of us. Like two whole, what's it called? Not steps, but Exercises. like Exercises. Exercises, yeah. in front of us, and I'm like, "Why? How is she still jumping?" Yeah. And then when I went, when I would get to the box, I had to mentally like think about jumping this box, and you're just jumping. So in that situation, for her, like for you, she was a mo- she was kind of motivation. I mean, you may not want to admit it, but you oh, looked at her and was like, "Okay, I can finish." I this. was waiting for her to quit so I could quit. <laughs> the moment you dropped to your knees and said you couldn't go no more I was gonna be done even if I was five exercises behind I'm done too <laughs> so with us we're going against somebody so they're motivating us because right. we're not gonna go as fast as we can like I can go fast on uh, one of those obstacles but if I have somebody doing it right across from me I'm gonna go even faster mm-hmm. so they're motivating me but also I'm like bruh I don't give a fuck if he drops down or if he stops or if he you gets hurt, I'm going. still going to go. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I've tried to throw y'all three together. Plus, I knew she was like, she works out with one of the right. Titans. So 
So it, oh, I, I knew she was gonna. I told that when I, <laughs> I was like, when I seen y'all uh, her walk in, I was like. All right, so cool. <laughs> Two skinny bitches. I'll be the big girl, and I know for a fact that I know I can beat Dex to certain things. Yeah. Like there's certain Dex. So is- that ex- perfect example. You're stronger than Dex. Dex has more agility. So in some of those exercises, you had the advantage, but then some mm-hmm. Dex had the advantage. Right. That's exactly how this competition is. So you could put me up against some guy who's two forty, but in the right competition, he's gonna get dusted. Right. And in the right competition, he's gonna beat the shit out of me. So it's it's all hit. That's right, because like when they put until... the Samoan kid with the big guy, I'm like, that's just not even fair. So, oh, oh, and I yeah. talk about wasn't that fucked? That was. So if you guys have if you guys have watched the Titan Games, the first it's on Hulu, right? Yeah, they, you can we yes. watch them. Yeah. it was the first episode. Yeah, or the one of the first. One two. of the first two. And they put a little Samoan guy that looked like a baby rock, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a baby the rock, and this big, huge, like yeah. ginormous white guy next to him smoked him. And I yeah, told, it wasn't and, a good and you match. Said, and you said you were like, uh, the big guy has an advantage. There are advantages that are in there, but if you use what you have, you can actually, you could have probably, the, uh, the guy could have probably beat him. So what I was telling you was, of course, the guy has, is, he's anchored. He's 200, upwards of 250 pounds. So he has that anchor. But the Samoan guy, he's smaller, faster, more compact. So if he would have probably stayed low and built up the speed, he probably would have stayed on par. So yeah. there's something. So like I said, you're gonna you have to plan for it. So like they, we didn't see the actual obstacles until the day, the night we filmed. So they'll take us out there, let us test it out, see how it feels and stuff like that. Show us what we have to do. Give At us the rules. Get we get they give us all the rules and then as so in that moment you're like from that point up until you take off, you're sitting there trying to like okay, what's what's gonna be my disadvantage? What's my advantage? How, mm. What do I need to do? So you still have to stay true to that and keep that in the back of your mind. But also, you got to remember that that motherfucker don't give a damn what your plan When do they is. tell you who you're going against? Right before you um, go? Yeah. You you know the the day of when we get there. Oh, damn. So you're, you're, he doesn't care what my plan is. He's just going to go. So he might have his own plan. But I mean, he also has to remember that I'm not going to stop. So you just have to go. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So when is, when what days does it come on? So uh, every Thursday night at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC. I know you keep telling me you can't tell me when you come on. I can't. <laughs> I ask every I, day. I, I tell every. I put a video out on Instagram. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I appreciate. I love all the support I've been getting. Everybody's like, oh my god, are you on tonight? Contractually, I can't tell anybody what. They because they have to announce it at the end of each episode who's on uh, the next week. So when the one thing you told me when I went to your house, it was a sixty four of y'all. Sixty four. I didn't know, oh, I didn't know so, that either. Yeah, so no wonder it's taking like thirty seven yeah. weeks for him yeah. to come on. <laughs> it's a million of y'all. So, so I'm like, shit. Like I'll see you next year, like, <laughs> twenty twenty. He coming out on the time again. <laughs> so tens of thousands applied. A hundred made it to the combine in July, and then sixty four of those were. Chosen. Oh my god, you're so special! Right, so, so, I mean, right. They was like, we need one bad bitch, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> they brought the so, one yeah. bad bitch from Orlando. But for anybody who hasn't watched the show, I'm I'm not even bullshitting Watch you. The, the women, show. the women oh, take man. that shit over. Yo. You know, I'm pissed about Carla from Puerto Rico. Yeah, my doll fucked up. <laughs> she got she lost i'm sad about mel i was like looking forward to seeing her on mount olympus oh the one that, that got hurt my, that's yeah. my girl and then, did she choose the white girl to go for her no it's, that's who she went up against that's so who, yeah. had she lost that's who would have been on mount olympus oh because anyway. i was about to say damn you know you got, she lost bad no it wasn't oh was it, it wasn't bad I, th- no. I, I thought she lost pretty bad so i don't know remember. how much i can say i'll tr- let's just say that their particular competition lasted much longer than what was shown on oh, TV. Oh, of course. I'm mean, sure with editing it's Yeah, crazy. so you got to you got to make it fit the fit the thing, but I'm tell I'm saying this a bit of information so people know how far, how hard they fought. It she was, actually Mel like did a, actually announce it on Instagram. Okay, she did. Okay. Yeah, so she did. So she said on her story. Yeah, so their battle was 21 minutes long. Yeah. So they're Holy sitting there shit. pushing each other back and forth across this platform against a wall. They can't see each other. So all you feel is resistance going against you. So imagine trying to like push a car, but you don't know how long the road is. So you don't know how far you got to push them. You don't 21 know. 21 minutes. That's minutes a long time. Straight. And it's like you can't stop pushing Whew. because you're going to get pushed off. So you're, con- you're constantly pushing this wall with somebody else pushing back on the other side for 21 minutes. That's insane. Yeah. Well, anyway, listen to it. I mean, you can watch it on TV Thursdays. 
Thursdays on NBC at 8 p.m. And if Eastern. you don't have cable, like some of us, you can you go can on Hulu. You can stream it on the NBC app. You oh, can. you can. You can you stream it on the NBC app. That's how I, free? I don't got cable. All of y'all who, who <laughs> use y'all brother and sister and best yep. friends Netflix login, you can steal they, uh, they cable login as mm-hmm. well. And I had used my app. mom's cable login. Yeah. That's how I see oh, it. Oh, okay. NBC. And you see it on time. Yep. Yeah. I see it live. NBC app. Use my mom's oh, login. Okay. I'm, I was about to be like, how you know? You we were me know, messaging girl, I, each other I, and you were watching it at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, so stream it live so we can tweet about it and talk about yeah. it. I'll give you my login. I got oh, no, no, you. I have cable. <laughs> I have cable. Okay, okay. You want to give it to everybody else? I, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> my mom will be like, um, why? why are so many people? <laughs> Who's ordering porn on, <laughs> my, on, my, on my cable bill? <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go over to unsolicited advice. Okay. I've been dating a woman for three years and she's the love of my life, but she's married. When I met her, she was just engaged and one thing led to another. And here we are three years later. She has been married for a year and has a kid. I'm very much involved in her and her child's life, but she's with a man for his money. Do you think we'll ever have a chance? Side note, this is a woman writing this. Interesting. Right. My first thing when I saw this, I'm like, first, she's like, she was just engaged. Babe, what the hell you mean just engaged? When she's engaged, as a promise of marriage. Mm-hmm. Right. Then one thing led to another. That's not one thing led to um, another. This is not <laughs> right. like, oh my God, I grabbed a spoon, I ate something. Oops, no. Like, right. She oh, planned marriage. This she was planned. planned a wedding. <laughs> like a whole. Then got married and had a whole child. Like a whole one. So when she says she's just with him for the money, so how did this baby come about? Right. You, they fucking. You know what I'm saying? So she's, she's with this man she's for real. Delusional. So do, you, do we think that um, she ever has a chance? No. First of all, if she's with him for the money, that means you're broke. So that's the first chance mm. right there. You have no chance, baby girl. Right. Like, you, you you don't have enough money for her. So she might love what you've given her on the side, but you're um you're not the entree. So this woman wants to be same. the only one in her life or just a part of her life? No, she already is a part of her life. She wants to be the only one. She wants one. to be the only one. She's still involved in her and her child's life. And she's like, well, I have a chance. And I'm sitting here play, thinking, no. Play a part, man. Come if on. they're married, no. <laughs> no, like it, they're just, no. And it's not even the marriage part because clearly this woman doesn't give a shit about right. her marriage. Right. Just to Let's be not say like, that. We don't know if this lady got an open relationship or this man already know about this lady. Clearly not because she wants something. No, no, no. Unless she says that she... You and men always. What? <laughs> always. Looking for ways around it. There's no, no I just... You are married with a child. If the information's not there, you I'm just, not going to assume that this man that, doesn't know about this I'll woman. say that's fair. That's fair. I'm all about getting the facts first. You know damn well first. I don't just jump on the, the men's side. I always I'm think a, both sides. I'm like, okay, maybe That's this fair. Man. If I don't okay. have all the facts, I'm it asking questions. It could be open marriage. So maybe she wants to be the only one during an open marriage and wants her to get rid of the man because she's so in love. Well, if it's open, but you, my thing is, you wouldn't be running unsolicited advice asking if you have a chance if that was the case, yeah. right? So, so because you have, a, if that, if it was an open relationship, you have your chance right there. That's your chance, right? So and I, she's saying I'm, I'm a part of her life, but she, I, it seems like she wants to be the only one, and that's not gonna happen. One, no. you don't have enough money for her, or no. she would have been left the man. If it was only for money, she would have left the man. If she didn't love that man, she wouldn't be there. There's plenty of other people with money. His child, yeah, or have or. If she's there for the money, she already has the kid. Yeah. Child support, baby. Right. If he's got money, money. That child support is, <laughs> is nice. You know, and both of y'all can live off of it. So clearly you don't have enough money and you don't have enough money either to supplement child support. So you don't have a chance. I would like to know what state she's in and what are the divorce laws of that state? Because she might have a chance in like five years. What happens in five years? She's probably entitled to half at that point. Mm. Oh. Even without a prenup? Even gotta, without, they might have a bruh, prenup. I think... You gotta start thinking like a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm not thinking like a bad bitch. <laughs> okay. Fun. If they got a prenup, then she don't have a chance. But this lady's in it for the long run. Five year, after five years, you're in, in some play in some states, like the laws is you have to, or in some cases, uh, you have to be in the marriage for a certain amount of time for you to be entitled mm-hmm. to his half. It's like that. If you're like, I don't know. So if you're married, I find me a husband right now. You got a husband. <laughs> Shut up. I know. I mean, like, he can stay. No, he'd be mine too. No, no. Oh. This is you. Is he, are you writing in on this letter? Is this really you? Are you just Ooh. switched it around a little bit? Nah, hell no. I'm not with no fucking woman. That's nasty. I said you switched it around. You could always oh. say they're a woman. They really you're right, be a man. You're right, you're right. Nah, nah. Mm-mm. So, yeah. I, I mean, to me, it doesn't seem like you have a chance. I like, But like I said, I don't know the exact situation that's going on right now. Maybe there is some 
some shady Even shit then, going on. Even then, you don't want something like that because if yeah. it seems like you're really in love and you're not gonna want an open relationship with this person because right. you're not enjoying it now as an open relationship. Or it, later on, she's gonna cheat on you. That's what I was about to say. I like, was gonna say the way you meet is the way, right? The way you, the way you get them is, is the get way you, them is you lose them or some shit like that. Shit. Some, the way you get them is the way you lose them. It's some, like yeah, it's the same something, something like that. that. Some grandma saying something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody grandma was giving Somebody them a pep talk. Uh, said something. I, dre- I dreamt about fish. Like, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? So to sum it up, baby girl, you don't have a chance. And anyone yeah. out there that's a side piece to anyone that's married, um. I can say from experience myself, although we were in love and I really thought it would go somewhere, when it came down to it, there's so many aspects of marriage when there's children involved, when there's money involved, when there's business involved. It doesn't matter how much in love you are, that's going to mm-hmm. come first regardless. And love at that point does they not still, matter. You still have to take care of home. Right. Yeah. Home comes first and it's, it's their livelihood and I, I, I understand it. It hurts and it sucks. So just don't put yourself in that predicament where you're going to fall in love with someone. Oh, but they're separated. No, you know what? Unless it's a separation like mine. I was with my Ayana's dad for years and I was together. We didn't done. just got divorced a year and a half ago, yeah. you know? But we were done, done. done. Yeah. Like that was done. Yeah. It was no going back. Then get involved. But anything before that, no. Yeah. Like you date someone. I have a friend that dated a guy and the baby was just, they weren't married, but the baby was like a couple of months old. Oh, oh that's no. That's not over. No. That, that's just definitely the not. Room the, dick, right. <laughs> the dick is still wet from my balls. Like, come on now. Like, come on now. Yeah, it's, nah, it's, nah, nah, it's not nah, worth nah. it. So. Yeah, he's, he, he was definitely still wet because uh, that pregnant pussy is uh, amazing. Sir, sir, sir. <laughs> what is the difference? Right, it's it's it's. Juicier. Does it feel different? It's juicier, Brad. That shit. You think so? Absolutely. Would you? Would you, as a man, sleep with a girl that's pregnant and nope. ain't your baby? Nope, 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 <laughs> nope. No. I was like, no. Nope. No. I feel like the the child would like. Because you know, there's would, would women the out there that like, go dating while they're pregnant. No, no that I can't do that. They do. I can't do that. No. This is reminding me of questions my students asked me the other day. I feel like the child in there will resent me and like grab or something like that. <laughs> Like, nah, Bite some, you? Some paranormal activity well, shit. Well, I mean, anyone out there that wants to date a pregnant lady and have sex with her, should, I, get, no. I wonder if they're like, if, so if that's a thing. Yeah, like if there's like pregnant escorts for men there's that- pregnant porn, not that I've seen it. Is there? Yeah, not that I've seen it. You just- <laughs> <laughs> You know, sometimes Pornhub takes you on a weird journey. <laughs> So I, I haven't seen it, but I'm just saying. I can't, I can't. All right, let's go to our last segment. It's my favorite one. Shit talk. Are we supposed to say that after you? No. Oh damn. You want to say it? No, nah, not anymore. Go ahead. No, you're not already. I want you to be the first person to ever say it. No. You'll be the first one. No. Look at him. Such wow. a brat. <laughs> right. Such a, you no. just threw a temper. Yeah, that was no. a tantrum and a half. Like, <laughs> my teacher voice was about to come on. Like, are Boy. you really acting this immature right now? <laughs> <laughs> you better say this. No, I want you to say it. No, I'm good. Uh, wow. Whatever. Wow. Anyways, shit talk. <laughs> I didn't want to touch too much on it or do a whole episode on it, but because everyone's talking about it, it's the R. Kelly mm. Documentary. Mm. You guys haven't watched it, but I watched nope. it with Ayana, and I finally, we finally just finished it because it was uh, took us a couple of days as long as hell. Wow, it's six whole hour episodes. So we went through it, and I can say I was part of the people that said, "Well, you know, Mm-mm. I was young when mm-hmm. the whole R. Kelly thing was going on. It was yeah. how this We're is what nineties, early yeah. not early nineties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got here in ninety six. So even with my integration of coming from Puerto Rico here, it it wasn't a huge thing for me. But I do remember I was a huge R. Kelly fan. Mm-hmm. His music was everywhere. He was he was just this icon in music, and Aaliyah too it was like I loved Aaliyah. Yeah, Aaliyah. So anyway, every adult for me, it's not so much a documentary. We all we all know R. Kelly is a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. We know what has happened to these women. But what upsets me the most are all the adults that covered for him mm. yeah there were managers there I mean, were that doesn't ex- that doesn't upset me the most but that's one component well, i mean outside he of upset, him yeah outside oh, yeah, of yeah. Him. so like i know that aspect of There's it so when, many, it's so many layers to it even me without seeing the documentary i can't watch that i don't want to be pissed off like for six hours that's just yeah. not i it's some. i it, can't it's, do that it's so but, I wanted to watch it with, I said on the last episode, I wanted to watch it with Ayana mm-hmm. just because it's things that I want her to understand yeah. and see. And you see from a lot of these kids that there's one mom that shout out to her. She went looking for her daughter and she didn't stop. Mm-hmm. And they actually documented when wow. she actually found her. She got her out. And being brainwashed is no joke, yeah. especially as a baby girl. Yeah. 14, 15 is young. Mm-hmm. But 
when the first guy was the one that forged the paperwork for Aaliyah saying that she was 18 so, she, so they can get married. Mm-hmm. Then they were seeing the girls in rooms not being fed for days. The abuse this man put on these girls. And the fact of the matter is that there were plenty of adults around that knew what was okay, going on. Okay, this is more than I thought. I did not even know these part, that part. Yes, so R. Kelly abused these women, hitting them. Physically abused them, mentally abused them, would starve them would record them oh my God. so that's how all the tapes came about would record them having sex would make them have threesomes with other girls um what they couldn't speak to each other so there was one girl wow. for months was in the same house with her friend and never saw her they had to ask permission to eat permission to speak permission to go to the bathroom oh my god it was it's that's how he has treated these girls so yes the the most upsetting part is, of course, R. Kelly period mm-hmm. doing it. But right. on top of uh, under that is the adults that knew. And mm-hmm. I know that if I were to see something like this, I would not be able to just sit there for a couple dollars. No. Listen, right. your conscience all these years later, how do, how do you sleep? There's no way. How do you sit there and spend the money that you're getting from a rapist, mm-hmm. from an abuser? Yeah. It's just it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. But another thing that struck me crazy was the fact that the only man outside of Charlemagne and he wasn't in it as much because the producer actually ended up cutting him out because of out, fake outrage really because to me it's, it's fake outrage how they didn't want Charlemagne on it because he's been accused of rape the one that he definitely I wasn't there so I'm not I am a fan of his so mm-hmm. it's like I could side with him and some people might say no he wasn't there they yeah. proved it he didn't have to pay anyone off like R. Kelly had done he just it was his party yeah. he's admitted and talked about what happened but anyway uh, what's his name John Legend mm-hmm. was the only man on this show outside of a clinical psychologist and no other nobody else in the media industry wanted to speak and wanted to speak out and I wanted to ask you as a man because Master P I had you listen to it mm-hmm. did a thing about is the parents fault I hear parents saying oh if I was the parent my child wouldn't be there a lot of these kids their parents didn't even know that we're going to these concerts or to the mm-hmm. trial to go watch him their parents that worked a lot mm-hmm. and these kids were home alone they're yeah. inner city girls and at the end of the day they were all black girls yeah. they were all black girls that didn't have it like I'm around Diana all the time and I'm privileged enough. And I can say that's a privilege that I have to be with my daughter that often. And she knows that I whoop her as a school. Like, I'm not going to let her go nowhere. Like, this is how it is. Can it happen? Yeah, it can still happen. Right. But he took advantage of these girls. And I don't want anyone putting 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 blame on a parent no. or putting blame on anyone else because no. it's or kids saying, oh, the kids should know better. Or we all no. had a boyfriend. We were teenagers. That yeah, was older. No, we no, did. But that doesn't no. make it right. Yeah. No. I, and I don't think I ever even had. Even then, I was like, like even in I high school, even... that shit was weird to me. It's like, why is this grown ass nigga pull, like picking you up? Yeah, I don't like, think I ever had a <laughs> grown boyfriend. I didn't have a grown boyfriend. No, I rem- I do remember being nineteen, and there was like a twenty five year old I mean, that would let me in, but I was already age. out of high school and stuff, right. and I had a kid, so I was. But fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, yeah, no. absolutely not. So why do you think is it that these men don't want to speak up? Cowards. That's all it is. They're cowards. Like. It's so many layers to this. Like I haven't watched it, so I don't know the the ins and outs, the the all the details and stuff like that. But it's just so many layers of this that pisses me off. I have a ten year old daughter, so first of all, she's not going over. No, when she goes over her friend's house, her like her friend's parents know that if the mom is about to leave, I'm coming to pick my daughter up. Right. No man is gonna be in the house with my child by her like by himself, mm-hmm. like just him and as not- an adult. And, and that's, that is because we we still need to keep our children like social with other kids. But that even scares me sometimes because women will do shit to kids too. That too. So mm. that's what I'm saying. So I like I am I go this go to this late. This is the only friend that mm-hmm. the, that my daughter really goes to see. So I'm always over there. I talk to them. I know the mom. I know the dad. But she she's respects me enough to know that oh I'm about to go to such and such at at this time. Uh, so it's gonna be just him. So if you want to come pick her up, yes, I'll be there to pick her right. up. So I'm always gonna be there. Like I know you're not going over this. I don't give a fuck who he is. He can be right. I'm sorry, he can be no. Jesus, but you ain't going over his house by yourself. Oh, I, well, she gonna have to go to Jesus I'm not later. Really, I'm not oh really yeah, you forgot. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like one day she gonna have to go see Jesus. Yeah, I'm just saying though. Like, unless- no, but it don't matter. Any male. Yeah. At a, mm-hmm. And she's too young, which and is 10, right? Like I said, there's some crazy women out there too. So it's case by case. But men in particular, no. If the dad is just My there, I don't care how many similar. kids is over there with her. No. And the older she gets, I, like, I, I do the same thing in respect to their parents. Oh, can we come over to your house and play with your daughter? Wait till her mom gets home and I'll let you know right. what time. Because I'm going to be gone or her mom will be here. I wouldn't do that just because... 
you know, you never know. I don't, I don't put myself in that situation. I've had a family member who had to go through that where somebody accused them of something that they didn't do. Wow. And yeah, so, so I don't even, I want to put myself in that situation. I don't want the parents to think that anything's going on. And I want them to understand that if my daughter goes over to their house, that I don't want That's just the man in there or something yep. like that. And so, the yeah, older she just, gets, it's even more because she's going to develop as a young woman. And you see my eighth, dad, eighth graders, even, you're probably seeing girls in high school. That they're, I mean, they're more, ads, like, I mean, they're, they're more developed than me. Right. Like, I think I'm still going through period. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bodies on these but, young middle school girls, no, is, they're insane. So if they and they don't, they don't get. Like I try to tell Ayana all the time, you need to think about the fact you're a young mm-hmm. woman now. Mm-hmm. There are men that don't know how mm-hmm. old you are, yep. and some of them know how or, old you are and, and don't, don't care. care. Yeah. Which yep. is why I was showing it's her this documentary because she'd be like, "Ma," but I'm just 13. I'm like, "But there are men like that." That, that who, prey on that exactly. one that who turns them on yep. mm-hmm. that is what they want you are what they want yeah. as soon as I got to high school um, my dad actually retired after my freshman year of high school um, so he was actually he worked in Connecticut so it was far but I guess being home alone I don't know if that was another trigger but as soon as I got to high school like the same friends I had where I would go over sleep over their house like all of a sudden it was like not a thing to sleep over he was like yeah no you're not sleeping over and I'm like I'm so confused. I've always right. like the one time he did like like the Pope died and we wanted to watch the church. We didn't watch. Well, we woke up a little bit, but we were just chilling in the house. Okay. Y'all were Catholic. As well, we fuck. went. The, so <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know a Pope died. Well, when the Pope died, they closed the schools. We didn't have school the next day because everybody's gonna watch oh. the mass because it was airing at four in the morning. Oh, was, I had you, no idea. So, you was Wait, Catholic, Catholic. I had no idea a Pope died. The yes. motherfuckers be so old. I think they've been. He's been the same Pope for the past twenty five hundred oh, years. Yeah, yeah. When I was in high school. He, I think it was my junior, sophomore, junior year. I think um, the Pope John died. Paul. Yeah, John Paul. Yeah. He passed away, and so they closed school the following day, and they were airing the like at four in the morning, straight from um, oh my god, Vatican from the Vatican. Yeah. I was like, where? Don't ask me. Um, the church. They were airing it, and we were like, that's that was like my excuse for like letting me be able to sleep right. over. That was like the one time my dad was like. All right, whatever, fine. But like, no, there was no sleeping over. I mean, even my prom night, I came home. It was at five in the morning, but I came home. I was pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it's just, I mean, and like I said, not faulting the parents because this is all R. Kelly's doing and the people around him. So you got to start at the top. He's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I try not to wish harm or death on anybody, but yeah. So So, one 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 of the survivors said that he liked his booty played with. Don't give a and shit. And he liked like, fingers in yeah, it. Yeah, fuck that. I don't give a damn. So you know oh what? He's, I, maybe. I would say maybe he should go to jail and they should rape him real hard. No Vaseline. Like, huh. But he might like it. And at this point, <laughs> it's not even punishment. It's pleasure. So I'm like, oh, yeah, damn. Just... Like, maybe like rip a, a, oh a nail off one <laughs> by one. So a, a little bit. Some just, torture. He needs. starting from there. That's where the fault lies. And then it trickled down. It trickles down from there. So yeah. I'm trying not to put any blame on the parents because, again, like you said, there were some outstanding circumstances right. that were in, in mm-hmm. place. So like he maybe, knew where to pray for these exactly. girls. Right. But he would, you know, he would chill outside the high school. And wow. I have, like every the thing day. is, the funny thing is, I heard something like that, like around like high school or college, that like people, like people in Chicago would like. Oh shit! Who said it? I can't even remember. I don't want to say the name anyway. But said that like R. Kelly would be like outside of schools and shit. Yeah, like no, that. they talked about it on here. Even the the That's resource crazy. officer would say how he was wow. there. And then another thing was, we Charlamagne just did a thing on the radio about this because, from what I remember about R. Kelly, it was all jokes. It was the pee on me by um, oh, Dave, Chappelle. I remember Dave Chappelle, or it's like don't get R. Kelly or anything pissing on people. Mm-hmm. And we're not taking into account he was peeing on a baby. Yeah. That's... Like peeing on a child, on a, my daughter's schoolmate, basically. Yeah. So we were having all these jokes, never realizing that we are patronizing and talking about these little girls mm-hmm. without, but the media made it that way. Yeah. And and it sucks for us. And some of them are saying, oh, what are these, we're little white girls. I don't know it if we're taking it the same matter. way. I mean, it's, it's obvious that. Uh, black girls, black women are more right. disrespected than any other woman on the, this planet. No, they were but saying that if the girls were white, he would have went to jail. Doesn't matter. I mean, either I don't care what what race, race they are. The he should this whole all this shit is wrong. Right. But I mean, yes, you can't deny that black women are more disrespected than anybody else on the face of the earth. But 
regardless of the race, this man is still a fucking oh, monster. Oh, he's disgusting. Like, he's yeah, like, absolutely disgusting. And the fact that they're making that an issue, like that's not the issue. Like the, I mean, yeah, we don't. I mean, we don't want. It's it's in a small way. There's race involved in this, but that's not the issue. This man is the issue. And this he's still issue out here. is the issue. Like, and he's still going on. He's still he's still doing shows. Yeah, he yeah. is. He's still and people are still tickets. buying tickets. His music was streaming the highest it ever has during that's this. So, that's, wow. And I would put. See, that's the thing. Like I said, there's levels to this. Apple Kelly's Music, at the, top. the people Spotify. who helped him out at the t- uh, below that, people who don't, who saw something and didn't say anything, but then the people who are being apologists for him and still supporting him, I put them in fault more than I would even start to put fault on the parents. Right. Like why Definitely the fuck? Should. And why, I told why you this before we started. Like you talk, like um, people say, uh, separate the art from the artist. I wasn't an R. Kelly fan. Like right. So I was, and I was saying that yeah. without realizing until this that, that the music was it's so embedded into like each one of these girls. Doing, yeah. Like Age of Nine, but a number with Aaliyah yeah. and like um, Bump and Grind. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah. It's just all, every song. I can't remember all of them, how they broke it down, but what it what, what they were all about. Yeah. And I'm just like, holy shit! So I'm singing these songs now, thinking he's talking about little girls. Yeah, that's that's just gross. Yeah. yeah. So it grosses me out. Like, hopefully, when a woman's fed up, because it's my favorite, and I like whenever I get pissed off at Jay, I gotta sing this song. When a woman's fed up, bitch. <laughs> It ain't nothing. You, you know, I gotta let him know. But now I can't even sing that song anymore like that because I don't know what he meant. Maybe one of these little girls was fed up. You know? Maybe one of, one of the girls ran away. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to bring that up because men need to step up. We yeah. need men to mm-hmm. protect us. And yes, women want to be independent, but still protect us. Be like, yeah. being there's independent nothing, there's doesn't nothing mean you wrong, don't protect right. us from other animals, like exactly. from other men. Yeah, there's Even other nothing women. wrong with being independent and also relying on a man. There are, like, we were man, we were made differently for a reason. Like, right. we have our roles. Like, there's, I don't, yeah. there's no issue in that. It was crazy. If y'all, um, I don't know if you want us to plug another podcast, but go listen to okay. Van Lathan's uh, latest episode. He and with Aaron something, Aaron Foster, Aaron, yes, actually one of my teammates or uh, former teammates. But the, the first few minutes before he starts the interview with Aaron, he talks about this whole situation and he uh-huh. worded it perfectly. Like there's nothing in that monologue that I would change. Like he said everything perfectly. Yeah, so that's so, yeah. Van Lathan's Red, Red Pill, Pill. Po- Red Pill podcast. It's a Red great podcast. I love it. I love Van. Anyway. Where can they find you on Instagram so they can see your fine show? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am underscore underscore. Um, uh, I balance- can't stand you people that put two underscores. So that was actually <laughs> not what I wanted to do, but the under underscore balanced fit was taken already um i was playing around the this is not so i actually just reinvented i guess myself on social (laughs) media about a year ago um and so when i was playing it around it was taken so i had to do the double Mm -hmm. underscore so it's double underscores balanced fit um and i obviously from the name it's mostly about fitness but it's also just my life um she fine y'all <laughs> and she got her abs out and she eats healthy thank and she you, got long you. healthy hair thank you thank you. You, know, you got good skin <clears throat> it's not you're not gonna see that what you see on mine <laughs> <laughs> and yeah my friends apparently love my captions so oh yeah she captions. has really funny captions too. captions are the favorite my favorite part she does part. she does so. and you sir i know they know how to find you at on date, my page at day <laughs> at day to Shelby um, Instagram I guess Twitter Facebook Dade D-A-D-E number Dade, two number two Shelby S-H-E-L-B-Y it's at uh, I'm plugging shit now um, <laughs> yeah so I have some online yoga classes and workouts coming out for the people who uh, been saying they want to come work out with Carla but ain't serious about it right I got Ooh. something coming out for y'all Ooh. Uh, <laughs> See, I, I joined you. You're I joined yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I and she here. drove all the way over here from Miami. Okay, all so, the way from Miami. Oh, y'all motherfuckers talking about it here in Orlando and don't show up. Um, anybody who's, and she a teacher. Exactly. And could afford it, so y'all better get it too. Okay. Um, anybody who's interested in traveling and also learning yoga and actually connecting with yourself more, I have a retreat going to Peru on June 4th through the 11th. You can check yep, that out. Where do I sign up? On my website. You going? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking Ooh. about it. That sounds. I've been to one wellness tour before, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Tell, so, oh, tell her who was teaching that. Ooh, friend, friend, my girlfriend <laughs> from Friend Zone, my hey, favorite friend. podcast. Yes, I oh, love my hey, friend. Jesus. Hey, she is fine. Man. She is. She but is. Yeah. 
So yeah. Both inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's per- coming up when again? Peru is uh, June 4th through the 11th, and then uh, going on tour this year again. So I'm looking oh, at. Oh, look at you're so famous. Oh. Okay. <laughs> going on a tour. I did a tour last year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're looking at some cities now. Uh, Toronto is going to be one of them. New York for sure. LA. We're still checking on Atlanta and Miami, seeing what the vibe is like. But yeah, we're going to announce that soon. I'm going to come to the New York one. Come no, on. I'm going to come to the LA one. I go to New York all the time. I'm going to go to the LA one. Pick one. I haven't been to LA. 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 Yeah, I'm going right. to LA. <laughs> I haven't been to LA yet either. Okay, let's go to LA. All right. Pick, oh, you don't have dates for none of this yet. Not yet. But the it is 2019. 2019 for sure. The okay. dates aren't out yet. But What about the app thing? That's not out yet? Um, That's coming out in the next week or two. Really? Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, I'm actually teaming up with uh, Nate Parker. He's doing a app called My Yeah, you see, he's so famous, y'all. <laughs> he got famous friends. Never not working. Never, never not working. Never with famous people, too. Okay. I'm the only little bum he got on the side. <laughs> now I come to a little podcast, sure. So, yeah, it's uh, the app is called My Tie. Um, it's actually, let's... The way I describe to people, it's a mixture of Instagram without the the bullshit that Instagram has. It's a mixture of Instagram, Periscope, and Patreon. So it's live streaming. So I'll be live streaming classes and and talks and meditations and you know my travels. And it'll be something that you can subscribe to. So it's not just random people, you know trolling that just happened to follow you so you actually have to pay to subscribe it's super cheap too mm-hmm. yes three dollars a month so Literally. for three dollars a month you will get you weekly take my three dollars <laughs> weekly yoga classes weekly workout sessions if you just want to sit and talk but the fun thing about this the, the amazing thing about this is that it's um nate parker developed this specifically for people of color who are entrepreneurs so like the Dope. fitness professionals and filmmakers and stuff like that so you get to actually get some information from these people so nate will actually be on it so if you're an aspiring filmmaker and you want to know you know what lens do i use for this particular shot he's actually going to be doing you know broadcasts about stuff like that so you can ask questions and then the the great thing for the people who are involved in this, it's a way for us to make money directly so that we don't have to plug products or make YouTube channels hoping right. that we get millions of subscribers before we get money out of it. So it's a way that people directly can, you know, get information and, and get an, uh, an experience with us and we directly get paid from it. So you can subscribe for $3 a month and then if you like he, to... guys, he's half naked all the time doing yoga. <laughs> so it's like a mixture of Pornhub and <laughs> yoga class. <laughs> so he'll probably have like a sock around his ball and, dick, <laughs> and then like doing do- the doggy thing that, that yogis dog. do. <laughs> so yeah, so it, you can just subscribe or if you need more information information or something one-on-one there's uh, there's uh, options for that so if you want a 30 minute one-on-one session they'll have options for that as well so it's a very professional called virtual porn no it's a um. very professional <laughs> app so it's nothing like my inst- i mean some of the stuff <laughs> on my instagram will be on there like that kind of content but you know it's going to be the artistic stuff that i do so yeah. it's not just me walking around i'm excited it. about it just because yeah. it's something different and so everybody's like oh where do i go to see yoga with a black teacher there's yeah. not that many exactly. you don't see a black mm-hmm. person yeah. doing yoga so in my in your city there might not be one but now you can get it on your phone you can just my go on favorite your phone one left miami back to new york oh, oh, i'm so man. sad um flo joe she's um i actually got to know her through bar through a bar class mm-hmm. um she was getting her yoga certification so she just recently got it a couple months ago and i was super excited excited because i still plan on doing a um girls wellness retreat mm-hmm. um, i want to plan it if you're invited wait don't worry don't okay worry. You got food? You. yeah of course <laughs> okay good then i'm coming <laughs> um and so my idea every time i think about it i always she was the first person i thought about that i would like hire to like i wanted to do a yoga meditation session um she's like the first person which i still will do i'll just make sure i give it enough time in advance so she can fly down because right. she did move back to new york city um but she's dope you can when follow do you want to do this <sighs> Summertime, ideally, just because I have Look more time. Look at that! Time. You just said it on the podcast. I did. So it's, it's going to go, go live. Summertime. So oh now God. you're gonna have to. Stay, <laughs> so you're right. summer. Stay tuned. She's gonna do a women's wellness. We're gonna hold retreat. me accountable. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to say y'all keep her accountable. Right, yeah. right. 
So yeah, look out for it. Anyways, thank you guys for coming on oh, and doing this with me. Thank, thank you actually, for inviting me. I started we getting was, jealous. We, we was talk, what, what you I started about? getting jealous. Why? Because I was talking oh, about being the only man on here. I'm like, damn, bro. You know, I'm only down the road, bro. You can, you can call me up. No, you're going to come. I'm going to bring you more. I want to be a, a friend. <laughs> you want to be? And oh, friend. Off of there. oh, shut <laughs> up. Carnival Maris and friend. All right, right. Whatever. After Zoe's, I got inspired. I was like, okay. Yeah, you got to come on. Anyways, bye, guys. I'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye.